Welcome along to the channel again, everybody. Great to have you with me again. If you've not already subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button down below right now. It helps the channel to grow so much and reach a wider audience. We want to grow this community and share our experiences of Microsoft 365 and Entra ID and beyond uh, as wide as we possibly can and learn, share and repeat together. Um, Consider becoming a member as well. You can join the channel now. I have three membership levels. I have consultant member. I have a senior consultant member and principal consultant member. There are all sorts of perks you get for being a member and it's your way of supporting me to grow the channel uh, that little bit more if you feel that you can. Any support is welcome and thank you to all my members have already joined. More on that in a moment before we get into the video. Please also do remember to hit that notifications bell so you never miss a video and give me a thumbs up if you enjoy my content. Fantastic. So what are we going to be talking about today? We're going to be talking all about Microsoft Entra and specifically Microsoft Entra ID, uh, formerly Azure AD. And it's going to be my top tips for users and groups, my five top tips my first five really, because there's going to be more of these, let's face it. But this one's going to be all about how you can set yourself up for success with certain settings and features within users and groups to make your lives easier as a Microsoft Entra ID administrator. So let's get into it. Here it comes. Before we get started on today's video, I want to give a shout out to all of my wonderful members on this channel. Your support means so much to me. Thank you for joining me on this journey and supporting me with my YouTube channel. So a big shout out to my five awesome members. Marcelo Bassi, who I've got to know really well. We spoke very recently. Uh, he is my principal consultant member and uh, he is absolutely wonderful. Marcelo, thank you for your support. It means a lot to me, and it's so good to get to know you. Then we have uh, Pradeep Alawat, who is a senior consultant on the channel. Uh, thank you so much for your support. As a senior member of the channel, you get uh, members-only videos, members' shout-outs, and uh, member badges as well. Then we have our three consultant members. We have uh, Albano Bernardo, uh, Nick Eighty and uh, Georgie Irescu. I hope I am saying all of those names correctly. Please do correct me if I am not. So thank you so much for your support. It means the world. Number five, user settings. It's so important to populate your users in Entra ID with good information. And this can be done right from within the Entra Admin Center at entra.microsoft.com under the Users section. Select the user that you want. In this case, I'm editing Joey Tribbiani. Go into Edit Properties and scroll on down. And this is the sort of thing I'm talking about. Make sure that you're populating job title. So Joey might be the marketing manager put in the company name, the department. So this would be marketing in Joey's case. Employee IDs, employee types. Uh, put in the manager field and so on and so forth. There are many reasons why this is a good idea. A couple of examples would be that uh, many of the features within uh, Purview, for example, uh, have the ability to use dynamic properties. So. Uh, Dynamic groups, for example, in Entra is another good one where uh, you can create dynamic rules. So uh, if the user department name equals marketing, then add to this dynamic uh, group as a member. So that's a good reason to do so. Uh, adding the manager field here, adding who is Joy's manager, do this for all of your users in in Microsoft Entra ID because this is going to populate for you a lovely uh, organization chart that you're going to be able to see with teams so you can see that structure in your organization. So a really important thing to do, fill in all these details because you can use these in other areas of Defender and Purview and Entra itself. Really powerful stuff. Number four, define your user settings. This is a really important one to get right as well because from the get-go when you have your Microsoft 365 tenant, you've got Entra ID set up, you want to know and control what your users can 
and can't do. So under users and user settings, you can control a lot of things here. You can control whether your users can or can't register applications. You may not want them to be able to do so. Restrict non-admin users from creating tenants. I would certainly have that one set to on for sure. Can users create security groups? Again, I would say no to that one, but you're gonna find that this is different depending on your unique organizational needs. Guest user access, a very important one. What are the guest user access restrictions that you need to have applied for your organization? Guest users can have the same access as members, that would be most inclusive. Guest users have more limited access to properties and memberships or directory objects. Or you can go uh, super restrictive and guest user access is restricted to properties and memberships of their own directory objects. So have a think about what your guest user stance is going to be. Uh, set access to the administration portal. Uh, restrict access to Azure AD or Microsoft Entra ID, now that should be, the administration portal. I would certainly say yes. We, uh, we want to restrict that so that only admins can get access to uh, that portal. Do you want to associate with LinkedIn and allow users to connect with their work or school account with LinkedIn? So you can do that yes for all, do a selected group or keep it off altogether. And you can do things like show, keep uh, user signed in option. So um, that will enable user to stay signed in with a prompt uh, in certain situations. And you can manage external collaboration settings and some of the user feature settings here as well. Awesome. Number three, groups general settings. Groups are very powerful within Microsoft Entra ID as a means to grant users access to things very, very easily, either with static rules or dynamic rules, as we've already mentioned. And the general settings here will give you more control over the behavior in relation to the groups that you have in Microsoft 365. So here we have things like self-service group management. Owners can manage group membership requests in my groups. So uh, take away some of the administrative burden from your organization and allow users to self-serve. So we can toggle that one to on, for example. Uh, restrict user ability to access groups, features in my groups. Uh, groups and user admin will have read-only access when the value of this is set to yes. So, uh, and some important information, global admins will have access regardless of the value of this, of this setting. So always look at these uh, informational tips to get more info on the feature. Uh, as it points out here, um, many of these things you have to have Azure AD Premium. But uh, hopefully Azure AD Premium or Microsoft Entra ID Premium is uh, more of the standard these days than uh, what it was previously. Security groups. Uh, users can create security groups in Azure Portals, API, or PowerShell, so you can switch that on or off as needed. Microsoft 365 groups. Users can create uh, M365 groups in Azure Portals, API, or PowerShell, so you have complete control here about what the users can do in terms of creating these groups. Really powerful stuff. And then directory-wide groups. So um, you can learn more about how to create direct reports, all users or all devices groups by this link here uh, and the other properties and the common rules of such. So lots of powerful features here for self-service management and some other group permissions. Really nice. Number two, set group expiration settings. Still on groups here, and expiration is a really important setting that a lot of organizations forget about. And you can set a group lifetime in days here uh, in this area within Microsoft Entra. And this is the number of days a group can exist before it needs to be renewed. Uh, there are three settings here, 180 days, 365 days, or you can put in a custom setting as well. We'll select 365 days for this one. And what it's telling us here is renewal notifications are emailed to group owners 30 days, 15 days, and one day prior to the group expiration. And we can populate this email address here. And group owners must have exchange licenses to retrieve notification emails, of course. Uh, if a group is not renewed and it is then deleted along with its associated content from sources such as Outlook, SharePoint, Teams, and Power BI. So we need to put in uh, email contact for groups with no owners. Uh, so we can put in uh, 
myself there, for example. And we can enable expiration for these Microsoft 365 groups. We can have that set to none, selected, or we can select all. And what's going to happen now? This is going to give us some really good lifecycle management of our groups within Microsoft 365. It's, and when we're thinking about groups, you've got to bear in mind that this will apply to Teams as well, because a Microsoft team is based on a Microsoft 365 group. So we want uh, any teams or groups that become stale and unused to have this baked in that um, after a certain period of time, uh, there will be an email sent to the nominated contact to decide whether that group should continue or not, whether it was renewed or whether it is going to expire. Very powerful stuff indeed. Be very careful with this one though. Make sure you're uh, very aware of the consequences of what happen happens when this is enabled. Number one, set a group naming policy. Naming policies are so good especially in relation to Microsoft Teams. Now, with a naming policy uh, in Microsoft Teams, you can set prefixes and suffixes that will be added to a team, uh, whether or not that is desired when a team is created by a user. Now, this will be uh, not the case if you're a global administrator, they will be exempt from that process, but uh, everyday users will have this prefix added. Now this can be done again from the Entra Admin Center under the groups and naming policy setting here. Uh, there are a couple of uh, settings within here actually of interest. You, you'll first go into the blocked words section where you can enable custom blocked words list. And you can upload a list of words that you wish to block to prevent Microsoft 365 groups from being given profane or reserved names and aliases. So uh, you can download a CSV file here with some um, uh, blocked words that you can edit and, and add your own to and then upload that here to uh, have your blocked words uh, that will be excluded from any groups or teams that you create. So that's uh, pretty cool and very important. But the group naming policy is what I specifically wanted to call out here. And the M365 groups naming policy allows you to add a specific prefix and or suffix to uh, the group name and alias of any Microsoft 365 group created by users. For example, we could have finance as the prefix, then the group name, and then Seattle as the suffix. So uh, that's giving us a very descriptive name for our team. So here we have uh, the current policy and we can choose to add a prefix by clicking on the box and selecting the type of prefix that we want to add. And that can be either an attribute uh, such as department or company or office or, and this goes back to what I mentioned earlier in the, one of the other tips in this video where this is why it's important to populate your users fields so you can choose from these really cool stuff or you can add in a string uh, instead and put in a string value that you want for your prefix and and the same principle for your suffix so you can add those on once you save and apply that any groups or teams that are created by users are going to have those prefixes and or suffixes applied to the teams. And this is a really good way of uh, forcing that naming convention. Really nice indeed. And that's it, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me on another video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, give me a thumbs up. That would be massively appreciated. And don't forget to hit that notifications bell so you don't miss the next video, uh, which will be coming very, very soon. Also, do leave me a comment. Let me know what you think about Microsoft Entra ID and my top tips. Let me know some of your top tips as well. And maybe we'll feature those on the channel in another video very, very soon. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well. You can find that down below. Reach out to me, not only in the comments, but you can find me on social media at M365 on X, formerly Twitter. And I'm on LinkedIn as well. And I'm not hard to find. I'm even on Blue Sky now as well. But that's it. Thanks for joining me. As ever, you take care of yourselves, whatever you're doing. Have a lovely day and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.